It's a Thursday morning in Lagos. And it's time to wake up, Nigeria. We are coming to you live on TVC here in our studios in Lagos. And I'm Yomi Owope. My name is Titi Laya Oinson. Remember, we're streaming live on tvcontinental.tv and, of course, on Facebook. You can look us up on TVC Connect. Make sure your comments to tweet at us. Make sure you tweet at TVC Connect with the hashtag wake up. Nigeria. Are you sure you've woken up this morning? I have. I have. <laughs> I had some great coffee this morning, by the way. All right. So uh, <laughs> it's a brand new day, and you know how it is. It's Thursday, and we love it. And you know what they say about Thursday? That's the day that ushers in the TGIF. Yes, it is. And top of the morning to you. We are happy to be coming to you live. Now, we are back with you know, to wake you up in style this morning and to help you start your morning on a bright tone. Chef Beyonce is back again. Beyonce! Yes, so he loves to hang out with us. I don't know, he just loves I us so much. Really and Mary's out, looking yeah. really excited because oh, yes, she had I'm all excited. the food yesterday. Mm -hmm. We didn't get Most any. Most of it. No, we didn't. <laughs> you guys did have some food. No, no. Yeah, you know you had some food, so stop it already. I don't or know what you're talking about. I won't give you any today. All right, so we're going to the day's business. Rez the Poet will be putting up an appearance <laughs> on the show today. Now, Rez is a spoken words performer with a twist. You wouldn't talk to me. You <laughs> we also have some guests sitting on the couch later to talk about something that you cannot afford not to have in your home. Later on, Mike and Harry Itier will be hinting us on the latest in entertainment news as well. Good morning, sir. You. Why is your tie askew? We are going, Major. We must project the image of wealth and success. Morning, everybody. And if you're particular about your health and shedding weight, we have a little something that you can do to help yourself using fruit. We will also be having Kara Hair Watch on the show today. There are women out there waiting for me to just talk to them and eat something. So why are you here? my office right now when you know I cannot stand you. There are so many women who want to have you. Dude, get the hell out of my office and go be with them because how am I going to put this? I am sick and tired of telling you this over and over again. There is absolutely nothing, Richmond. Nothing that you can say that will ever make me change my mind. <laughs> All that and so much more on Wake Up Nigeria this morning. But first, let's take the news as IK is standing by. Thanks, uh, Titi. Now, well, it's not uh, you know, good news as police in Borono uh, say that 16 persons were killed and 82 others wounded in Tuesday's suicide bomb attack in Kondoga local government. The Commissioner of Police, Borono Command, Damian Chuku, says the incident happened in a market. He says three suicide attackers, if a male and, if, and two females, detonated their explosives at a busy market. Chuku said that the injured have been taken to a specialist hospital in Meduguri. That's the state capital. The command has deployed a bomb disposal team to the area. The EFCC says it will not be deterred in any way by the attack on the police by, uh, on, on its office by gunmen in the early hours of Wednesday. Spokesman for the anti-corruption agency, Wilson Wajare, uh, Wajare, says that police investigations are underway in order to fish out those that are behind the attack. Namosi has returned to the building, uh, housing an extension of the EFCC headquarters in the Wuse Zone 7 district of Abuja. The anti-corruption agency says that the assailants when were out for one of its top investigators in charge of its foreign exchange malpractices fraud section. No one was hurt in the attack but items including a uh, vehicle were of course pitted with uh, bullet holes. The agency says that it will not renege in its fight against corruption in the country even uh, if corruption fights back just as it did yesterday. And of course, a coalition of youths in northern Nigeria says that the federal government must not be swayed into removing Ibrahim Magu as acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. 
And they say removing Magu would be an alternative to corruption and bad governance. The youths want the EFCC boss to remain steadfast and not be distracted by the issue of his confirmation. In other stories, the Senate has appealed to ASU to urgently call off its nationwide strike. The upper legislative house expressed surprise over the union's decision to begin an industrial action without giving a warning since it was part of the negotiation that led to the setting up of the Wale uh, Babalaki Committee by the federal government to look into their demands. Chairman of the Senate Committee on Tertiary Education, Jubrin Barao, disclosed this at a press briefing on the strike at the National Assembly complex. Well, let's say warn that the next story coming up has flash photography. Acting President Yemi Shibaju has assigned portfolios to the two ministers who were sworn in three weeks ago. Stephen Ocheni and Suleiman Hassan were sworn in in May after being confirmed by the Senate. Ocheni will resume as Minister of State in the Ministry of Labor and Productivity, filling the space left by the late James Ocholi. Hassan, who was appointed to fill the Gombe State, uh, uh, of course, will resume as a Minister of State for Power, Works and Housing. Also sworn in were 15 permanent secretaries. And our jury's election management board at INEX says that it has installed a stopwatch on its website uh, to begin a countdown to the presidential election on February 16, 2019. The electoral board says that this will show Nigerians how prepared it is for the exercise. Among the resident electoral commissioners just sworn in, the INEC chairman, Professor uh, Yakubu Mahmoud, says that uh, some of them will be deployed for the governorship election in Anambra State coming up in November uh, this year. And of course, the 18th for orientation uh, that's it now on the news. Back to you, Titi and Yami. All right. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, we're going to go straight to the weather to find out what's going on this morning. Uh, we're back for the sports news and Mike is here. Now, Mike, what is going on with Barcelona? Uh, man, it's, it's uh, sorry. It's, it's, it's sorry. I, I feel very sorry for that. <laughs> you know, demolition, annihilation. I, I don't know. Words fail me. How it's are they going to pick up? It, it's, it's going to be hard. I don't know. Hmm. I personally don't know. By the way, Titi, you look lovely. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's get straight to the sports <laughs> update. Uh, Super Eagles technical advisor, uh, Geno Oro, has confirmed that, that former Super Eagles captain and goalkeeper Vincent Ayama will return to the national team as soon as he regains full fitness. Oro confirmed that, that uh, he has a near-perfect relationship with the Lille of France goalkeeper who is currently not in the good books of new coach of French League One side, Marcelo Bielsa, who asked him from the first team. Roy is confident Ayama will return to the Super Eagles once he's fully fit and also sorts his club issues. Nigerian international Ogen Yonazi has been denied work permits to play for English championship side Birmingham City. Birmingham had agreed terms with the 24-year-old to sign him from his Turkish club Trabzon Sport. However, the Football Association uh, turned down the first application for work permit for Nazi last week. An appeal made by the club was rejected on Wednesday, despite Onazi being a regular in the Nigerian national team. Onazi has played 38 times for the Super Eagles and helped them win the 2013 African Cup of Nations and reach the last 16 of the World Cup in Brazil a year later. Despite appearing in over 80% of the national team games, Onazi failed to earn a permit after the FA considered the West African nation's rankings in the past two years.
And then, of course, on to transfer update. Blaise Matuidi has become the latest star to join Juventus, with the club confirming his arrival in Turin to put the final touches on an £18 million move from Paris Saint-Germain. The club, the club confirmed his arrival on their official social media account by posting a picture of the French man holding a club scarf and wearing a Juventus cap along with the caption, Just Landed. Matuidi posed for photographers and fans alike as he made his way through the terminal and will undergo a medical later before finalizing paperwork on a three-year deal. Everton manager Ronald Koeman has confirmed Geoffrey Sigurdsson has completed a medical ahead of his move from a Swansea. The Toffees agreed a £45 million deal for the Iceland International on Tuesday night to end the summer long chase. Uh, now, uh, Yomi mentioned this, but this is quite sad. Let's get to it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Spanish giants Barcelona appear close to getting their man, Usman Dembele, from Bundesliga side Borussia Dortmund as replacement for Neymar. Barcelona have agreed the sum of £90 million for the 20 year old uh, following Liverpool's resistance on Felipe Cotino. But Baca and Dortmund are in negotiation on add-ons of about £30 million. Now, um, Yomi, I need your take on this. Mm -hmm. it's, they are, now they know that Baka are desperate. They need someone to fill in the yeah. void left by Neymar. By Neymar yeah. And that will push the price up. It will, because um, here they are you know, um, really weak because of, really, of the loss really of weak. Neymar. Really weak. weak. Really weak. Okay, uh, and then uh, let's see. Um, Arsene Wenger insists that financial implications are not important when it comes to Alexis Sanchez's entering the final year of his Arsenal contract. The Chilean star has one year remaining on his existing deal. Wenger says the club is untroubled by that prospect and insists that the potential impact on Sanchez uh, on the field next season will outweigh any financial losses if he leaves for free. And then, of course, uh, Funke Oshonaike, one of Nigeria's most decorated tennis players, has openly criticized the organizers of the ITTF a Challenge Series, the Nigerian Open. Oshonaike, who claims that she and other Nigerian players had to provide accommodation for themselves at the Nigerian Open, expressed shock that foreign players got a better treatment. She said she had to pick up her bills when she needed treatment at the tournament. Quoting her now. It's worrisome when Nigeria hosts an ITTF event and our players had to provide accommodation for themselves. I can see Titi nodding. You have something to say about this. I, I have so much to say, but I don't think we'll have enough time. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's quite diplomatic Honestly. there. Honestly. All right. And then Serena Williams aims to defend her Australian Open title next year with the Americans saying the rapid return to action would only give her around three months to prepare after giving birth to her first child. The 23-year-old, 23-time uh, Grand Slam winner announced her pregnancy in April and will be on maternity leave for the rest of the year. The 35-year-old is engaged to Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohainen. The American added that she could have a few new tricks up her sleeve after analyzing her game on television over the last few months. Williams is one Grand Slam shy of Australian uh, Margaret Court's uh, long-standing record of 24 major titles. And then on to the news that uh, is making around and interesting everybody. Floyd Mayweather has openly admitted that he has genuine dislike for Conor McGregor. And he has won the Irishman against trying any backhand UFC moves in the upcoming Las Vegas showdown. The two fighting giants are set to meet on the 26th of August in what is arguably the biggest fight of all time. As the fight approaches, uh, there has been frequent talk of the possibility of any illegal moves used by Conor McGregor breaching the regulations of boxing. Should this happen, Mayweather says he is more than certain that uh, the Dubliner will face extreme and immediate action. Yomi, I saw you smiling. I think, Are you ready for I this fight? I think Mayweather is just scared. You know, <laughs> I actually think it's a publicity More than 10 stuff. years younger than him. Yeah. Mayweather is almost 40. He is, yeah. McGregor is on fire. So he is. You can't try the guy. Okay. <laughs> but you know, this, this is how publicity stunts begin. Just mm. to get you know, everybody riled up yeah. and energized for the fight. I think it's just a play. Okay, that's it on sports this morning. The dynamite and the bomb. Take it away. <laughs> Thanks so much, Mike. All right, so we're moving on to the newspapers of the day. And uh, TT will be starting with The Nation. On the cover of The Nation this morning, the headline is Tighter Security for Magu After Gun Attack on EFCC. 
mom and others under protection. Gunmen leave a death threat note. That's a big headline there. Um, regarding uh, Evans in detention, Evans to know his fate on August 29th. You can find that on page 43 of The Nation. Um, federal government lifts ban on post-UTME diversities. You can find that on page 8. Um, it also says here, federal government broke promise to ASU, says minister. you find that and much more on the cover of The Nation. And this day, this morning, begins with uh, a story that says uh, the National Bureau of Statistics Roughly 400 billion naira in bribes given to public officials annually. Wow, 400 billion. And then says bribery is an established part of administrative procedure in Nigeria. Police judiciary identified as biggest bribe takers. And still under cover of this day. In a first, FG accepts blame for ASU strike. NANS decries industrial action, says ERGP failed to address problems in varsities. And then also, um, on the cover of this day, we have, again, Shatima meets Northern, leaders, Northern Elders, Ariwa Coalition on Withdrawal of Quit Notice to Igbos. And then finally, on the cover of this day, Trump sacks Nigeria's Ogunlesi other corporate advisors. All that on the cover of this day this morning. Moving forward to the punch, Asu Strike. We failed to fulfill agreement, federal government admits. Why public officials send children abroad. That's uh, from the Senate panel chair. And uh, colleges of education lecturers issue notice of strike. Uh, also, there are some uh, sad images of uh, what uh, happened, uh, I think, I believe yesterday. Mm -hmm. The suicide bombers kill 17 and injure 82 in Borno attack. All mm. that on page 15 of The Punch. Uh, Four-year-old pupil killed in Lagos Shrine. Parents and others arrested. You can find that on page four and five in The Punch. And uh, to round off, uh, gunmen attack EFCC office and drop threat letter. Hmm. All that and more on The Punch. All right, and then finally, on the cover of The Guardian, Nigeria police judges highest bribe takers, says UN agency, alleges over 400 billion naira spent on bribes yearly. Um, it's not true, says the NBA. And then government failed ASU, minister admits, pledges quick resolution of crisis, union cautions against politicizing strike, and then Senate urges teachers to resume work. All these and more in the papers this morning. And of course, you can check them out and uh, get more information on that. That's it on the newspaper headlines for now. Mike and Idala are waiting to take us through aerobics and exercise. <laughs>